Coding. Made easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter coming to you with your next Java Made Easy tutorial. And in this tutorial we're going to be talking about three things, math, operations, comments, and debugging. So first we're going to be talking about comments. So we've been doing really minuscule code and um, and, and it's fine, but let's say that you, you just started with Java and you take a break or somebody wants to read your code or something or say it's something complex and you're giving it to somebody and and you want to tell them how it works well how do you let them know do you have to write down every single thing and let them know um, no there's this thing called comments and if you put two uh, forward slashes it, it, it allows you to write any text you want and the compiler will ignore the text so it can be a note so for example if I create anything after the two double slashes will be a comment. So say I made an integer called um, um, grades or something like that. I could put two backslashes and say stores the grades of the student. So it, it is a reminder for you and it is a reminder for everybody else reading your code that this variable stores the grades of the student. Now, don't think that you have to comment every line of code. Comments are most useful when you have a lot going on or something complex going on or something that might, like if you were to put your code away and then look at your code a year later, something that you might be confused about, not be a good thing to comment. But when you're low in learning, everything is probably new to you. So you might want to comment certain things so when you come back and learn it, you understand what it is. So you could comment and say an integer is a whole number that could be negative or positive, yada yada yada, in order to just, to, just as a mind, a reminder to yourself. Now another thing is um, the debugger. So we can um, sometimes things will, will be happening in our in our code or something or say we want to know um, what is happening in our code and say I do something like this and I say system out dot print line so obviously whenever we get an error uh, whenever we get an error or something in the program it, it won't um, it will stop the program and so on and show us where the error is or sometimes it won't even compile but let's say you want to kind of step through your program to kind of um, to kind of check certain values to see if values are correct. So there's something called breakpoints, and if you look at this left pane or left panel right here, if you were if you were to click on a line and um, or if I was to right click on it and I say toggle go breakpoint, you will see it puts a blue little dot here. And when I run this code, make sure it's run in debug mode. So by pressing this, I'm pretty sure it does it in debug mode. And what it does is that when it reaches this line of code, um, or maybe it's not in debug mode right now. Nope, it is not. So when we run in debug mode, yep, we click yes. Then what happens is we get a debugger. And um, I know this can be a bit complex and a bit daunting at first, uh, but what a debugger does is that when we, when we run regularly, we don't run the debugger, it just runs it seamlessly. But a debugger allows us to find out bugs or figure out bugs in our program. And a breakpoint, when it reaches this point in the program, it will pause the program. And this window will come up and it allows you to analyze certain things going on in your program. So as we can see, okay, our current variable grades is set to the value 8 so as of this point right here our grades is set to the value 8 and so what we can do is after we're done that breakpoint we can do um, we can do some other things we can step into or step over and step over will bring us to the next line so we can figure out what happens after the next line and so on and so forth and if I remove this um, sorry let me just move this out of the way so if we go down here we can see our output right here we can see our variables in the top right corner and we can see a bunch of other things but the main things you're gonna want to focus on are the variables and the output to see if it is what you want and you can use that to step through your program or you can set up multiple breakthrough breakpoints to see if everything's running correctly or see what errors you want 
the debugger right now is not really important to you but it will be very important to you in the future um so just letting that be known so i'm just going to um, um let's see if i can get rid of this um get rid of that and um okay man i don't know what okay whatever so last but not least we're going to look at some math mathematical operations so what did i do here i've never sh i haven't showed you guys what the plus plus means but what um what we've been doing in the past few programs is when we want to add something to a variable we've been saying if we want to add one to a variable we've been saying grades plus one a lot of times in c plus plus uh, in c plus plus or java or c sharp or any of these programming languages You'll want to increment by one, especially in a for loop. And an easy way to do it is with the plus plus operator. What this does is that it adds one to it. Same thing with minus minus. It de de um, decrements by it. You can also put plus plus in front of it. Most times you won't need to, but you can put plus plus in front of it or minus minus in front of it. The difference is that the plus plus adds it after it calculates whatever adds a value to it after it calculates it and the putting plus plus before it adds to it then it does something with it and I can show you the difference um, right now so for, say for example I do print line and I do grades plus plus and then I do system out dot print line I do plus plus grades well, if we look at the input, the input might surprise you. The output might surprise you. Sorry. So let's run this program, and let me just remove this disable breakpoint. Or if I can remove it, and I'm gonna I've run this program, and if we look down here, sorry, if we look down here, we see the value seven and nine. So let's look what happened. The initial value was seven, and we said print out grades plus equals one, right? But what happened was that it displayed seven and then after it displayed it then it added one to it so now the value of grades is set to eight then when we said system print line plus plus grades it added it to it first so now the value is nine and then it displayed it so if you ever need to add something um add a value to it quickly or before you do an operation then you do plus plus or minus minus before now there's also a lot of shortcuts because a lot of programmers are lazy and there's a lot of shortcuts and they're really rewarding shortcuts so let's say i wanted to do um say i want to um let's use the averages example in our program before we had a float of 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 a number and we said like let's say the number was equal to 500 and to find the average we said average is equal to average divided by the amount so say it was three well if you want to divide by the actual variable number you can say divide equals divide equals is the same as saying is equal to average divided by a certain number so all I have to do is saying divided by divide equals three and it's the same as saying average is equal to average divided by three so it's a little shortcut the same things for multiplication so multiplying equals means that average times whatever same thing with plus equals and we have minus equals as well so you can do that as well and there is some other things like the modulus so if you ever want to find the remainder of something the modulus operator uh, will give you the remainder so if you say 3 mod 1 it will give you the remainder of that operation so anyways that's it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching don't forget to comment rate, and subscribe and bye for now